kids are growing up. We're uh, talking now to Lily West on Wednesday, June 26, 1974, only three days after her 86th birthday. And we're continuing from a previous uh, recording in which we're talking about drinking habits uh, long years ago when she was a young girl and a young woman. And you were telling about how some people drank very little, others drank a lot and didn't show it, and some were stayed pretty high a good bit of the time, like Wash Monkey be talking. Yeah. And then you were commenting on the Wests. Were you going to say anything else about the range of drinking in that generation of the Wests? Well, they they wasn't any heavy drinkers. Heavy drinkers, yeah. except Jack. Mm -hmm. He was grandfather West's uh, mm -hmm. first wife, mm -hmm. and the first bunch of kids, there's four of them. This was a son of Grandpa West? Yeah, and then the second bunch was Sarah and Jimmy. Right. Jimmy never, never did drink. Right. Let me ask you now about a different question. Compared to today, when I think women feel fairly free to drink in public, you know, and, uh, as, women, as men do, how, what were the customs then? Would would a woman uh, drink in public, or how, how was it then? No, they didn't, uh, they didn't drink in public. They just would, they refused it flat. If they were offered a drink, they would uh, yeah. refuse it. Well, it do you ever remember a woman in, as a young girl that did drink in front of it? Well, no, not, no, okay. I don't. Now let's say at home your dad would have a drink. Would your mother join him in a drink in private? Well, at, uh, yeah, at home she'd take a drink. But when uh, they'd be, uh, his friends come in, mm -hmm. two or three men, mm -hmm. and he'd offer a drink, mm -hmm. well, they'd take a drink, or he never would offer her. He never would do the same thing too, and they would offer her. Mm -hmm. Well, she never was around. She mm -hmm. usually. Stayed clear when she stayed mm -hmm. back. She had her work to do, mm -hmm. and uh, they just didn't do it. Mm -hmm. Did people ever? You know how they mix a drink? Was they did they they either drank it straight? You took a drink of it, but you didn't mix it with anything. In those days, no, did they didn't mix it with anything. Not even with water. Sometimes. Huh? With eggnog? Yeah. Yeah, they would then. They Christmas they, like now or when? Oh uh, well, that's uh, Usually at Christmas time, just when they. But they otherwise didn't but even I mix it with water. But I have seen them make it when make eggnog when they just mm -hmm. yeah when they take a notion they wanted one, mm -hmm. and then they'd make uh, uh it was a little they take uh, ginger mm -hmm. and put it in water mm -hmm. and boil it, make it pretty strong with ginger. Mm -hmm. And then put sugar in it, make it sweet, and then they pour whiskey in it. They call that uh, hot tom. Hot tom. Hot tom. <laughs> that was hot water, which had been had ginger, ginger. cooked in. Ginger. Mm -hmm. And then they added whiskey to that. Yeah. But, uh, that was more or less uh, an entry. Yeah, that was a mixed drink of a sort. Yeah, it was. Uh, I had gave it a I had tasted it. it. It's pretty good. It's a little bit hot with that ginger in it. But mm -hmm. I know they used to laugh because she was ticked him to death. Grandpa West, mm -hmm. he was, I even in Gus's house, well, maybe he was working for him, doing something, making board or something. And uh, Gus fixed one, and Hot Grandpa time. liked it. He liked whiskey, but he didn't get drunk. Grandpa West wouldn't get drunk. Nor Oliver never got drunk. I never saw him drunk in my life. Got drunk near three years old, but Harv was a pretty heavy drinker, his brother. But then the younger boy never drank. But Grandpa was there and Gus would fix this. Ah, uh, uh, how about making it? Uh, let's, let's make it a hot time. I'll be going to make it a hot time. Grandpa didn't know what it was. Mm -hmm. Well, he fixed it. Grandpa drank it. And he said, that I never had anything that rested me any more than that. Mm -hmm. Just, just, just mm -hmm. relax all over from drinking it. Mm -hmm. 
So the next night they went out and done a hard day's work, come back in. Particularly Gus, Grandpa had forgot the name of the stuff. And he said, Gus, how about fixing us another Tom and Jerry? Tom and Jerry. <laughs> Tom and Jerry. <laughs> That cow heard him laugh a lot. Last time I was with Gus before his mind was getting sort of slippery. He was, we had a laugh about that. Grandpa was Tom and Jerry. Well, that day, people enjoyed it. They kind of get together well, or just. Right. Let somebody me, come let me in, get somebody. another view of something. What? Huh? What was a. If, if women didn't, they didn't smoke. No. Either. Old, old women smoked a pipe. Mm -hmm. And they had houses built with little little pockets in the chimney, out of the chimney. And they'd, on one side of that, they'd have a little square cubby hole where the old women put the pipe. They always sit in the corner. Was that in your own? Most of the homes had that built? Yeah. Mm -hmm. Well, there's just a lot of homes that had that. Men didn't smoke pipes, just old women? Is that what you're saying? Well, well, some men did. Mm -hmm. My daddy never smoked until he got real old, and he had a kidney. And I already had Bright's disease, and the doctors told him to quit chewing tobacco, mm -hmm. chew tobacco all his life. He said, now you can smoke, but it'll have to be a pipe. Don't ever smoke a cigarette. Mm -hmm. And uh, he smoked for years before he died. Mm -hmm and never chewed. But women, a good many of them, had the custom as you were a small girl growing up of smoking a pipe. Yeah, yeah. It wasn't a corn cob pipe? They, or oh, or some had corn cob yeah. pipe. Some of them would just take Briar a, pipes. Take a corn pipe, a corn cob, and break it off, bore it out up here, bore a hole in here and put a cane, get a little, little cane to fit in there, and they use that for a pipe. I've seen a lot of them smoking that way. But they most had what they called clay pipes. Mm -hmm. There was rock on my daddy's place, soapstone they called it. And it was a, a dark reddish brown. Mm -hmm. And you could take that and whittle it down, make they make boards, used to make pipes out of it. You bake them somehow or another. And Where'd they get their tobacco then? In tins? They grew it. They grew, it. They grew, it. They grew their own tobacco. They grew their own tobacco. Everybody had a tobacco patch. Mm -hmm. And I used to hate that worse than anything. I had to pick the worms off of it and pull the suckers off. Mm -hmm. <laughs> Let it get so high and they'd top yeah, it. Yeah, right. And then the suckers would start coming out of every leaf. We had to keep mm -hmm. them picked off. And big old worms, young, did long, you, big old horns. How about curing it? Did you have to smoke it? Or cure no, it? You, they, when it got right, it uh, get little brown spots come over all on the leaves. Mm -hmm. I let go down and cut that down, down close to the ground. And then they'd split that stalk, start the top of it, spread it down just long enough to put on a stick. But they lay it, they cut it. Pile it up and pile it, let it go through a heat. And then they take that up and hang it on those sticks. Great long sticks. And everybody raised enough for their own use and some to sell. Well, not everybody didn't, but a lot of people bought back. Well, they let it hang down on those sticks till the, the stalk dried out. All they said, all the strength went from the stalk into the tobacco. Well, then they'd take it down and take those leaves all off and get up in bunches, out the bunches, hang them up somewhere, let them cure out better till all the stems was dry, and then they twist it up. Pull that stem, that middle stem out. Mm -hmm. Oh, it would be great big to pull it out and uh, twist it. Oh, I've got some twisted down the store. Sure, yeah, I'll twist it a minute, twist it. And then, and then it was done for. They had tobacco all over. Till the next year, they didn't recognize enough to do them a year. And they didn't, they got to where then they could get this, they called it sweet tobacco then, mm -hmm. just one kind. What would people mean in those days by a bad woman? 
my what? A bad woman, what would they be referring to if she didn't drink? Well, it was one that run what? around as everybody's dog to push them. Mm-hmm. And she says, well... And in a small community, would there still be such people, or would they usually leave? Oh, there's one. No, they stayed around. I knew one woman, one, one woman. She was, I thought she was an old woman when I first knew her. But she'd been, she, I don't know how many children she had. And she never had been married. And she just drove around from one place to another. She had one boy. I all of them, they all died one boy. And he went to school? He grew up, yeah, he went to school. And she took pretty good care of him, kept him clothes and, mm-hmm. and something for her to eat. She worked like a slave. She worked for anybody. She'd come do a whole big washing for a whole show. And she used to want to work on a wash for my mother. And I'll take it in the hog show. And Dad told her, he said, I quit my wife. She said, you get rid of one of my hog jaws. He liked it. Yeah. And, of course, hog jaws were cheaper than just the other meat. And, but Dad always, he'd always pay her. She wanted me to pay her meat, meal or anything she wanted. Not much money passed in those days, did they? No, there wasn't. It was mostly barter and trading. Mm-hmm. Yeah, they'd get out and wash for meat or a meal or just anything that, they, that you had. People just didn't have money. Mm-hmm. Like, uh, but when uh, I can remember, Dad boarded the school teacher once. He taught school. I went to school time. And I didn't like him for anything. He was the hateful thing I ever saw. He was a young man. Mm-hmm. He boarded him for four dollars a month, and they, mother and my sister did his work. How old were you? Oh, I was about eight or nine years old. He boarded in your home? Yeah. Did mm-hmm. he have a separate room, or did he no, sleep with the other could, boys? No, we or? couldn't afford it. He had a, he slept in a bed. He had a separate bed. Mm-hmm. With the nobody wanted to sleep with. Him. Okay, he slept in a bed. Where did he come from? He lived in Dawson County. He was raised in Dawson County. Right. He was over in Gilmore. All right, now. And he's too far. He right. couldn't go back and forth. Was he your teacher? Yeah, I hate. How him. many kids were in that at that time when you were about eight or nine years old? How many kids were together? In that at school? home. And at that school where you? Oh, were? oh, they'd be in in good weather. See, the start of school, the first day of January. They didn't take off New Year's Day. New Year's Day was a holiday. They started the first day of January, mm-hmm. unless it came on Sunday. And uh, they'd uh, run, uh, say, uh, till a month and a half, January through February. Mm-hmm. They only had three months school in. That's but they, they quit to... when? At the, in oh, the middle of quit, February? Uh, in February. And uh, then people began to prepare for the crop. Uh, well, you still haven't had three months. Then. Or when did it begin? No, they'd, uh, they'd go a month and a half. month and a half. Then how long would you be off? Be off till, I believe, to start back in in July, hottest part of the weather. Well, you're sort of laying by after yeah, you had after a chance to lay by. Yeah, after the school was All right, so let me see if I got it. You had about a month and a half then, a month and a half in the summer. Yeah. Yeah. And then again, that stopped in time for gathering in the fall. Yeah. Okay. That was the time the. the so that was the three the months, well, and that was time. true for all of your grade school education. Yeah. It was a three months year. Well, the last two years I went to school, I they put it up to five months. But I okay. Didn't. Now the. Uh, they couldn't get any teachers. January first was not a holiday. New Year's no. Eve was not. I'm mean, New I, Year's Day. What did anything happen New Year's Eve the night before? Was no. there any excitement? Nothing. Everybody anything? was quiet. Nothing like today. Nothing. Firecrackers. No. Nothing. No firecrackers or nothing like that. All right. Now, this boy, what was his name? That lived boarded with you, the school Bell teacher. Bell Summerhouse. Huh? Bell Summerhouse. That was Bell the name. Bell Summerhouse. That was his name. Yeah. And your dad boarded him for four dollars a month. Yeah. 
for our month. So he stayed there for those six weeks with you? Did he uh, go he home stayed, weekends? Yeah, he go some some weekends go home. On that, he's always he's a big old hypocrite. He'd all sit down and talk. One of my brothers, my oldest brother, was grown at that time, and he'd been drunk a few times. And so he'd uh, he'd sit down and talk to my dad and uh, the mean whiskey. No, what ought to be done with anybody that didn't have sense enough to control himself. Mm -hmm. And he was drinking it all the time. He get in the house. I kept it in his trunk. And mm -hmm. yeah. Back then, see, he kept it. That his bothered trunk. you more than anything. Him being a hypocrite, didn't it? You wouldn't have minded him drinking. Oh, well, uh, no. But one time, I said, that mother and my sisters did his washing. But one time, he was meaning whiskey. Just talking about it, and it all the time, oh, he wouldn't. And he'd take a drink. Dad, take a, take a. Take a drink. He said, yeah, it won't hurt you. Well, I, I don't think I want it. And him wasn't ever so much in his trunk. Now, he got my oldest brother to get it for him, but he talked to Dad about my brother mm -hmm. about him drinking so bad. And I, he was a bad hypocrite to be a teacher, wasn't and, he? Yeah. And uh, so uh, he'd finally he'd take the bottle and turn it up. He'd hold it in his hand. You couldn't tell how much it run out in his mouth. But, oh, he'd make the off his face and shiver just like mm -hmm. he Kid put over a bad dose of medicine, and uh, <clears throat> so one day he come in from school. Dad had got some whiskey. He's always uh, fixing up medicine. See, his daddy was a doctor. Oh. His daddy was a botanical doctor. Okay. My grandpa, uh, Lucky, was a doctor. He made his own medicine, and Dad knew what to use and what to use it for. And uh, he used to help him gather stuff. When he'd get, he take this mayapple. Uh, you know what it is. Yes, I do. In the spring, yeah. Well, he'd take the, the roots of that mm -hmm. and cut it up in whiskey. And a spoonful of it is as good a laxative as you need. And uh, he'd fix a bottle of that. Fix some, had put lady slipper and other roots, red slipper, ginseng, rotten roots. And, all kinds of roots that was good for medicine. And so he he put the other, he just got the other picked up. It says Mayapple, he had it sitting up in the, in the ship and put a bottle of it. He'd make us all take it once in a while. It didn't taste good, but you could taste the whiskey in it all right. But the rest of it was bitter, wasn't it? Yeah, bitter, I reckon. And he said, uh, Bill, said, I'll fix some medicine while you're sick. Try some of it, too. And he took it. Took him a little sip of it. They don't like to take a little. I don't know how much he took. But anyhow, he took a sip, handed it back. Rome, my second brother, he didn't mean as a striped snake. He's always into something. <clears throat> putting tricks on somebody, but he 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 didn't like the man either, and he knew it. How he liked him. He knew he was a drinking fellow. He slept in the same room my brother did, mm -hmm. and he'd see him slip into that trunk. Yeah. And, and no uh, one, the brothers, your brothers didn't tell your father that he was. No, he didn't say anything to him about it. We never did tell anything. We knew better to tell things like that on anybody. We'd have to prove it. And it's, right. Mm -hmm. We just didn't talk things. Like that. Right. And, and if we heard anything, mm -hmm. overheard them telling it. something, we knew better than to repeat it. We just didn't do it. We didn't ask questions. Mm -hmm. About things that didn't concern us. If we wanted to know something, I never did care if I asked my daddy any kind of a question about something that was right. a, would be a help to me. But uh, not to hurt somebody. There's no the question. Yeah. But this man, Rome, was watching him. Or did he, he saw him. He saw him go to the. Dad kept had his mayapple and whiskey up mm -hmm. in the bookshelf on the shelf. There was space up there. But he saw him going away from there. He could tell from where he looked and he sampled that person after he'd already took the first Dad gave it. And directly he he just stayed back in the, the little 
bedroom here where Scurr slept, and he was back in there where he could see out. And then, so Joe went back to get the second time after he drank what Dad did. So the went back, got another swig, and the next morning, the funniest part about it, he got. Uh, he never would get up in the morning till he hear I was so, you know, people when they used to set the table for a meal, they'd turn the face bottom up and I always turn I used to turn them over and make them bang, yeah. make them bang on the table, you know. It's not hard enough to break them. Uh, my sister sometimes she did the cooking her and her mother most of the time and cook breakfast. Sometimes she'd get up and he'd hear the coffee grinder and then he'd hear the plates going on the table. That's that would be then a signal get, to get up. Then he'd get up. Or she'd get up sometimes. Time to it because he caught on to it. And uh, she'd get up and play the brown coffee, you know, and she'd set the table. And he'd come to the whole breakfast for her. She'd say, Nobody told you breakfast was ready. <laughs> she was teasing him by that. So that morning, they were cooking breakfast. They just got in, got it far started good in the cook stove. They heard him coming too. And mother says, What's it gonna happen? And he was he was kinda Peaky down there. Thought a good bit of, of my sister, you know, he was trying to as a, be sweet on her. Yeah. Hey, I don't know what he's working up to. His mother says, What in the world is gonna happen? And uh, what's, what's happened? The bells are up before we got breakfast started. And Rome come in, man. He, he knew what was up. He come in, he got both on the arm, took him down to the window. He said, now just watch and you'll see what happened directly if you don't hurry. Mm -hmm. He drank so much as the apple. He, he, got, he got about halfway of the bone <laughs> and stopped on the lunch <laughs> He had an accident right there, huh? Yeah! Mm -hmm. And he went to the barn, <laughs> went on to the barn, and I don't know how he got back to the house. I don't remember that. Was there an outhouse there, or was he going no, to the barn? No, nothing. They were yeah. playing a dog behind the barn or a couple of weeds. <laughs> yeah. you know, they didn't have no out, outside toilet. Mm -hmm. They always went to the barn and hunting. <laughs> mm -hmm. So uh, he come back in, and that's on Friday. Mm -hmm. He was lucky. He come on back and sit down and eat breakfast. Jerome mm -hmm. told, told Molly, my sister, he said, you'll have a job washing them drawers. <laughs> and he said, oh, so. and you know, they never did show up. He so never? That, that morning when they'd eaten breakfast, he said, Mr. Walker, are you going to use your, both your horses today? Dad said, no, I'm not. Amy, you wasn't Amy. You said, any of them. I said, why? What do you want? All I, I thought I'd go home tonight. And he always, Dad always let him ride a horse home. Take one of the horses. And I said, I don't know why. Mother said, how come? She said, you went last Friday. Well, I know, but Mother was one feeling good. And I, I thought, I'd go home. Rome knew <laughs> I thought I'd go home and see how she was, and I kind of worried about her. Well, he got on the horse and went on home. Well, that week when they went to wash, they didn't find his underwear. Well, he come in that night, Mother said, well, what did you do with your underwear you pulled off? That was it. He came in Sunday night, he'd leave Friday. He came in Sunday night, yes. Uh, the next morning, I believe, she was going to wash the next day. And she yeah. said, well, what did she do? She always gathered the mm -hmm. uh, dirty clothes up before she mm -hmm. ready to wash. So what did you do with your underclothes that you pulled off when you went home? All he said, I was going home, and I just thought I'd take them along and let mother wash them. <laughs> she said, of all things, and your mother wasn't feeling good. Well, it was a doctor. I helped her do her washing. <laughs> Hypocrite to the end. So huh? we knew what had happened. Well, that comes to living close. Let me go back on the arrangements now. It was $4 a month. 
He yeah. ate all of his meals with you. Uh -huh. What would he take to school for lunch? What time would you go to school? What time would you get out? I'd go to school. Started, school started at 8 o'clock and held till 4. That means, did you furnish him a lunch? To, yeah. What would you take to lunch? Oh, he, anything that we, well, they had to put in. What do you think? Biscuits? Uh, uh, biscuits. Would there be meat or not for lunch? Like well, he, he had meat. We always had meat. Take biscuits and meat if he wanted. Sometimes he wouldn't want it. Sometimes he'd want a baked sweet potato. Mm -hmm. And sometimes he'd want some kind of vegetables. Mm -hmm. What would you eat for breakfast, likely? Well, eggs, meat. Coffee. And I drank coffee all the time. Syrup, jelly, whatever we had. And biscuits with and molasses butter. or something. Yeah, butter, yeah. Plenty, plenty of butter. butter. And yeah. what would dinner likely be? Several uh -huh. veg dinner would be several vegetables, maybe. Oh uh, yes, if they if they had them prepared. If mm -hmm. they didn't, they just put in what they had and he eat it, mm -hmm. so nothing about it. Mm -hmm. And then you did his wash for him. Yeah. And he had his own bed for four dollars a month. Right. Yeah. <laughs> now, what was he paid as a schoolmaster? Twelve dollars a month. He was paying a third of it out board. Yeah. Yeah. Now, how did he dress? In the same way the others did, or did yes. he try to dress like a schoolman? Well, he had pretty good clothes. Would he wear uh, like a tie, or what would he wear to school? Uh, no, he wear. wear a tie. What would he wear, likely? Just a straight shirt with a collar on it. And a little short coat, or he wouldn't wear overalls or something? Like no, he wouldn't wear overalls. Mm -hmm. Dress pants, or mm -hmm. the old ones that he had. But they'd last him a long time. He didn't do anything. Were his uh, shoes homemade from his? Family or were he, he store bought shoes? Do you remember? She, oh, his, he bought his shoes. None of his folks could make shoes. I wore homemade shoes. <laughs> his clothes, he had dress pants that he bought too, mm -hmm. but his shirt was homemade, do you think? Uh, yes, his mother made his shirt. Just how it is. She'd get, they'd get about kind of nice looking material to make it sure it's not a rough, coarse work shirt stuff. So. Yeah. And then, uh, did he have to furnish supplies, or did the children bring their own? Furnish a what? Any kind of supplies? Uh-uh. I didn't furnish anything. I had a wood. Now, when he got place. to school, he'd build a fire? Would he get there early yeah, enough? Yeah, he'd go. If he got there early enough, well, he most of the time, he'd How close was he to the school? Oh, he was about three quarters of a mile. What was the name of the school at that the time? The Kenimer School. Mm -hmm. It was a Kenimer. Well, Which brings know. us back to Kenimer's. Is That's that a name we were just talking about on Wash Monkey? Yeah. A different Kenimer. That's the same bunch, the same. It got, that school got its name from that family. That family, yeah. What about Kenimer now? Uh, what was that we were talking about we never did get recorded? What happened to Wash Monkey was, I think you said he. <laughs> They he was mad. suspected of something? Yeah, they are mad. They just got to talk to him. Uh, maybe I'd seen him out somewhere mm -hmm. where there's a post bar where there's steel. And uh, they just make up things. Now these things. were moonshiners that, that got it in their mind? Uh, right? Yeah. Okay. Yeah. Yeah, it was a bunch of them. There was a bunch of them. There's Bearden's. Kenimer, Lauren, and Anderson, just a, a crowd of them like that, you know, and they just, if they just got in their mind that you reported yeah. them, mm -hmm. if your steel was cut down and they had seen anything, you know, any sus suspicious or anything that they could call suspicious, just see you rambling around maybe through the woods, looking for your hog or something like that. A lot of people out looking for hogs. They had cattle out. No, had free range. Mm -hmm. There's hogs and cattle, right. and young mules and sheep, goats and everything else out in the mountain. And people looked there for the stock, mm -hmm. whether they had any any notion of reporting to steal or if not. Mm -hmm. they, okay. Somebody could, uh, a little ahead above us. You're speaking of who? Some of your some of the relatives, some dads. Uh, Kim Mulkey's relatives. Yeah, which some ones? Of his brother and sisters, children. Which ones thought they were? A, well, now I couldn't them. go and 
an example. It's not allowed until I think until I thought well, it Well, just think of one. Uh, well, Uncle Marion West, mm -hmm. his, uh, he was that married dad's next his older sister, I believe. Mm -hmm. She was a crank and crabbed and she uh, kind of, I don't know, got a swell head. Uncle Marion, well, he was a nice person and he was, he taught school. Mm -hmm. And she they raised a bunch of children, some of them low down and dirty as skunks. But still, they thought they were just a little above the average relative. This was when you were growing up? Oh, it was just, uh, always. Mm -hmm. Not when I was growing up. I didn't know anything about it before I grew up, but it, before I was born, mm -hmm. but it was... Uh, and I know uh, one of the, they had one daughter, and I only had four boys, I think, one daughter. And he, <coughs> she married, she married a doctor. Well, of course, I saw her head the worse. He wasn't no good. And uh, not as a doctor. I there are know. some of your modern inventions. What? Motorcycles. Running up and down the road. Uh, a little too modern for me. And when she comes out, uh, this girl, her dad's niece, her husband died after they'd been married. They had two children. He was a doctor, and he took a notion to be his own doctor, and he took some kind of medicine that killed him. I don't know what. Mm -hmm. I don't know whether I don't know whether it's intentional right. or what it was. You know, I never did remember him. I, I guess mm -hmm. I saw him time or two, maybe, but that's all. They moved to Atlanta. Well, the children, two children, grew up. They should come back to her daddy's. Mm -hmm. They grew up, and they thought they was him. They were just a little above anybody, any ordinary person. Her daddy was a doctor. Right, I got the idea. And, and there were others like the Marion And grandpa West. used yeah. to be a tooth teacher, used to teach school. Right. My grandpa taught school. And my daddy was a doctor. And now yeah. they, they thought right. they knew everything on that, so the strength of that. Right. And, uh, now, what you were saying was that some of these people, when I distracted you by saying who, that thought they were better, we were discussing, this is Thursday, June 27th, the same week you were had your 86th birthday. And we were discussing, I believe, privies and outhouses, a real noble that subject. That was what you started. That yeah. was the question you asked. Yeah, now, now well, what I about got these on to the story people? I was people. Telling. Right. Now, if you just, just keep this. I'll go slow. Go ahead. <laughs> keep it slow. Now, when you, when you mentioned that, then I thought about that, it was always a joke with those kids. <laughs> so this girl came with her mother to spend the night with daddy. She went outside, oh, she was an awful, she was about 10 years old, but she could put on airs like Anthony used to, you know. Uh -huh. And she went out and, uh, I just got to go outside. Auntie Lotta, uh, do you have a privy? And <laughs> mother said no. And we just squat in one of those nances. <laughs> <laughs> Go down in the whittly And So she said, uh, well, I just can't hardly make out without a privy. Grandma Mac, Grandma Mac has got one, and that was her daddy's mother. And she lived about 10 miles away from her. She never seldom ever visited them. She couldn't make out about a privy for Grandma Mac had that one. That always tickled us kids. <laughs> no, they didn't have these these back houses. All right, so uh, people went outside behind the tree, the barn, bushes. Now, when uh, were there, there people in your neighborhood? Did huh? did anybody have a privy or an outhouse? I told you I never saw one. <laughs> Till when? Well, I guess. try to think. Well, the first one I ever saw was in, I guess it was in 19 and, about 19 and 16. My daddy bought a farm out at Cartagena, where it was just was all open country and the highway come right through here and the settlement road all just around. You had to have a place or just get publicly out anywhere. Well, the place he bought out there had a outdoor toilet in it. But it was as far as from here to the store from the house. Mm -hmm. Kind of cold in the winter, wasn't it? Uh, yeah, they they built them that way. Just keep down there, bad odors. You know, they couldn't. They didn't prepare for any way to. Most a lot of people later on had to dig a 
Yeah. Or something came under them and right. built over it then, and they could keep the down the odor down. It didn't, you know, smell to it. Now, I guess that's the first thing I remember But in your own family, in your own home, until you and Oliver left the mountains, you didn't have one. No. And when did you first have a... Well, when house? we moved to Cobb County, we rented a farm in Cobb County, and there was nothing there. Mm -hmm. We had to use the barn or the woods, woods just across the road. Mm -hmm. Never didn't know when a rabbit hunter or a squirrel hunter would get caught. <laughs> mm -hmm. Well, they just, they bought them. Uh, very common thing, but the well, When do you later, think it was when you had one? Huh? When did you have one in your own home, your outside? When we moved over in the city limits of Austell on my farm, we ran the farm across mm -hmm. after we left the first place we went to the farm and mm -hmm. on the it was in the city limits of the, the house was. That was by then in the nineteen twenties, was it? Yeah, nineteen twenty. I believe in 1920 we moved and there. from then on, Kennesaw had one, the other places had one. Oh, yeah, they had all of them. Yeah, yeah, everybody had one. But from then on, on the rest of the After World War One, Very few places you wouldn't find one. Some of them wasn't very good. An old man lived up above me at Kennesaw. He built him one. He had short lumber and didn't have enough of it to stack it up and make it go like it's high enough. He built it, and it was just about that high. When, <laughs> <laughs> when you stood up, you were in public. <laughs> when he sat down, he was in public. <laughs> you could see him from here up. Take him up there, he ain't lived right out. He lived right that out. It was more what the, the on French the do, you know. On the level of uh, from a lane, and she just killed herself. In, in, <laughs> in, uh, She'd call me sometimes, and I'd be, oh, it's coming out time to look, buddy. <laughs> <laughs> He don't hide his head and shoulders, but he's safe in other ways. <laughs> well, you know, in Europe, they don't make a joke of it or have short lumber. They just, uh, the men's rooms very often yeah. consist of, of, um, of just building from about knee height uh -huh. to uh, shoulder height or, or a little higher sometimes. Well, but they're rather open as a general the idea. That, yeah. That's the way this fellow had his. They have public things like that. All right, that was a first, and so in Gilmer County and most of the mountain counties, they just were not, they well, weren't in existence except plenty, probably. There's plenty of families living in Gilmer County now that never have had the pleasure of using an outdoor toilet <laughs> or bathroom. They lived their bathroom. whole lives. <laughs> yeah. There, well, I imagine Ian L.J. That place, that place where? Where? You went with me up there. Yeah, there, which one do you think? At Lower Miller. Mm -hmm. we yeah, that house, right? Ate dinner. There's no, never been a, a, a outdoor toilet, but no place they have. There's a smokehouse right out from the kitchen, and it's down all this, everything's covered back here. There's no, nobody living on that side and around, no road space. And they get right behind that smokehouse. Once in a while, they take a rope, go a hole, and break it off, and let it run down the hill. <laughs> no, there never was, never was one there. Well, and in some, I understand, I've never been over in parts of Asia, of course, uh, people use this as fertilizer. Mm -hmm. and, uh, they, they really hoe it then. Yeah. They don't just hoe it once in a while. Um, what other firsts can you think of like that? Your first, um, perhaps, electric light? Sewing machine. Sewing machine. Where did you see your first sewing machine? Oh, I guess my mother had the first sewing machine. She didn't, uh, I was about the seventh kid, and she didn't get a sewing machine until after I was born. I don't remember when she got it, but I, I remember her having it, and I remember sewing on it after I grew up. I was big enough to fool her once. And then, uh, And she used it to make just about all the clothes that the whole well, family yeah. used? Otherwise, she'd made them with her fingers. She used to, uh, I think of it, I was the seventh kid. And she carved and spun and wove the cloth to make all of our clothes. And she'd always, on the end of the, a piece of cloth, 
put in that had the, the big beam, they rolled it, they'd get a bunch of threads, she had to warp that and get it to where she'd get it through her sleigh and get it like uh, it was woven just like this, this cloth you buy, just, just to solid, is it? run through there. And it was a slow, slow way of making a living. See, the, they had these uh, sleighs, uh, the harness and the sleighs, and the sleighs was, uh, they were about that wide. Don had one over here, so I need to go over here and somebody sold it, I think. It was about that wide and had these uh, slender reeds, uh, like comb teeth, you know, only they were stationary at each end. Mm -hmm. Well, see, that, see, get that, put that cloth, roll it around after she got it in order where she could separate the threads and get them lined up to make a piece mm -hmm. of cloth. And she'd take it to that harness. The harness had a little, it was, it was made out of thread. And it had it come out about so, about that far, and then there's a, it's tied here, and now a little loop about like that. And then on down a shorter loop, and then on down a longer loop. That was to make the different figures in the claw. She had different colored threads, you know. And uh, she'd put it in that harness the thread and need to had to cut through them loops and then in the sleigh when she got into the sleigh she I had to untie the thread as tied but she tied bunches. She got so many she knew what she was doing. She knew how much it took to make the cloth. I didn't touch it either. Mm -hmm. I don't think I did. I didn't mean to but I did. And uh, she'd uh, be tied in knots, not in little bunches. And little bunches about uh, about as big as my finger I guess. Well, I had to take them and take them through that once, one at a time, set humped up in under there, mm -hmm. and handed them to my sister. And she had a little... Which uh, sister was this? It was my oldest sister, Molly. Mm -hmm. She was, mm -hmm. got burned to death when she was mm -hmm. 27 years old, 1904. Mm -hmm. And uh, she slipped this little, just a little bitty thin wafer-like strip with a hook on the end of it. She slipped that through each tooth of that slave between every one of those reeds and catch that thread and pull it through. She pulled it through to get some in it and she'd tie that. And she go and I had to pick them through that and I almost You died. were picking them through. You were handing them to Molly. Yeah, I was picking them And what was Molly doing in relation to what your mother was doing? Well, my mother was knitting or doing something else at that time. Yeah. We were putting the cloth in the loom, okay. getting it ready to yeah. weave. Okay. Uh, Molly, that, that Molly was, just, was preparing the That just took two hands. That was only two, right. two people's job. And she'd catch the thread, and I'd, I'd pick them out like that, and she'd reach and get them. And now, would she them. just work with one material? Would she work with, like, wool or with cotton? What would she be working with? Well, she'd be working with the cotton. It, the, 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 the filling, right. not the filling. She the, was carding the, the uh, cotton originally. Not the filling, the chain or the cloth. It wasn't a, the filling is what you fill in with that. You cross with it. Right? Yeah, you go cross. cross yeah. The filling and the chain. Mm -hmm. That's what they call uh, that. All it, it was all together. You go in that. And uh, the thread that they wove in there to fill in those threads was uh, that was the filling. But she took that all, get that all through, she get that sleeve. Uh, why did she want the yeah. call? If she'd fill as much of it as she could. What is it? Okay. This dog in there. Chewing and away. She'd, uh, when she'd get it all through, that, her cloth and the threads through that, mm -hmm. why did she want the claw? Then she'd bring it out <coughs> and fasten all those strings, and she had a what to call a temple. It was a kind of contraption. It had uh, spears on, was hinged together, and had a little, little spear pin like on each end. Well, she put that out there, and it, then it worked. What it, size was it, would you say? Oh, it was a cloth. It was, if they wanted the cloth 26 inches, they had that, they could okay. regulate it. They only went to the bottom. And uh, it was just a very small little something. It was strong. Well, when she get ready, she fastened that at the end of the thread. When she put the thread through the over, she had to put it over the 
another beam, another thing on the loom. She'd have to fasten that there. And she'd get her, her, her she had pedals down in the under that was fastened to these harnesses. But she'd, she'd put the thread through it first. Well, when she'd, she'd mash this pedal, it'd go up like that. And uh, when she got it ready to weave, all this thread come back, it just looked just looked like a, just straight strings across the other one. But when she makes that pedal, that harness would raise, up. raise that up. Well, it 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 would open the threads, mm -hmm. the long threads that she from the big beam out here to the front. Was uh, when she makes that one pedal, one pedal would cross up that way. She throw a shuttle with the thread in the filling in it through between them threads. The shuttle would th shoot through then carrying the filling. Yes, yeah, she did this. Pitch it through there, she could maybe go clear through. I couldn't have done it. And then she'd catch it on this side. Now that was a hand operation. Yeah, now. she'd catch it on this side and mash another pedal and that'd cross the thread right the opposite way. Mm -hmm. For turning it. And uh, then she'd pull the shoulder back through it. And then that wove the, yeah. the filling in, but it, it went under and over and under and How over. How fast would she have a thread? Do that well, she could do that. Uh, she could, uh, oh, she's pretty fast at it. She's a pretty good weaver. My sister could weave more than she could, but they made about Molly weaved too. 10, 15 mm -hmm. yards across a day. Yes, I am. If they didn't have new Now, did yard. she only work in cotton, or was it possible wool, to work in wool? Wool, cotton, wool. Wool. More wool than cotton. M wool she worked with more often than cotton. Now, was this because she, uh, you were wool, up there? she worked with every season, right. every year, she made a piece of wool cloth. Right. She'd make blankets, mm -hmm. coverlets, mm -hmm. these kind of things right. with rays, a little figure, I don't, I don't guess you ever saw one. Uh, she had one when she died, and I'd like to have it, but we gave it to Horace, because there's just one of them, and there's three of us girls, mm -hmm. and we gave it to Horace. And, uh, he left it there, and my brothers, Charles and Marietta. And I don't know why or what for, but they tore that into strings, and it was perfectly good spread when they did. And it was left there. And they tore it up. Just I need to strengthen it. All right, now, back. now the wool that she got uh, was was this because in the area where you lived there was more sheep raised, and wool was. Well, you obviously uh, were not in cotton country when you were in Gilmer, so you would have had a break. No in. cotton never grew right. in Gilmer. I don't know what daddy, daddy used to plant a patch of cotton that would have to make quilts. Well, mother wove a lot of cotton material, too. <coughs> but let's take the wool. Well, now. they had sheep. Everybody right. had sheep. Right, so everybody had sheep. That means they they did harvest their own wool up there. Sure. Now, could would she handle it from what stage through, would she start the carton? Could she take raw wool just as it came, or would it have to be? Well, I'm not tell you. In the fall of the year, when the sheep was brought in, they shared them in the fall before it got too cold. It was full of bagel ice. You know what bagel ice is? They're little, little old flat sticky things. Stick all over. They don't. They don't. Uh, no, not a lot of cooking for it. They're just a little bit of flat seed. Well, sheep will get fat on them and also gather a lot of them in the wool when it gets ripe. When, when they get ripe, we're going to shed off. But we never did have to, they'd come out by carving. Well, what didn't come loose and fall out of the car, she'd have to pick out. But they'd share the sheep and turn them out in the field and on the farm. They were on the range all summer. But in the wintertime, they began to lamb along by the end, last of February and the first of March, and they had to take them where they could protect the lamb. They'd share them sheep, turn them in the cornfield out in Huckleberry as high as your head, loaded from top of the bottom. Well, them sheep, great big old sheep, uh, they'd bring them in then before, in the swing when it got warm enough that they it wouldn't hurt them to cut the wool. Mm -hmm. They'd uh, share them, cut the wool. And many of the time I've seen my dad and mother cut the coat off of a sheep, a, a big old sheep. It wanted to be, I don't know, 
big, great big string of bull on each other. Uh, they get one, one solid, it'd be one solid piece held together by cucumbers. <laughs> well, it was still cold weather and a lot of rain, and a lot of little, several little silly kids that couldn't get out, do nothing on the outside. Didn't go to work in the field and anything. Still too small. Till, yeah, and my mother would pile that bull down in the pile. Seat us children all around it. Right flat on the floor of the lake. I was up there and kicked birds out of that bull. My back hurt so bad, I didn't know. Mm. I said, no, mother, my back hurt. <sighs> you ain't old enough to know you've got a, you ain't big enough to know you've got a back. Get the birds out of that bull. <laughs> And it had never been worked, it was greasy, my hands would get just yeah. as greasy. Wool was when it first cut off with sheep, as greasy as everything. Mm -hmm. And uh, we'd pick the birds, sore fingers. Well, I had to pick birds out if I got big enough to do something else, but I went out and helped them cut sprouts in the field in, in the spring. But on rainy days, that's when she, we put in extra time in the house picking the bird out of the wool. When you we get finished. that picked out, we pick it all out, and then she'd wash it. She couldn't wash it with the bird. Mm -hmm. She'd wash that stuff, and he'd be just as pretty and quiet. She'd be using your own homemade soap. Oh, sure, sure. Uh, she and run down lye. She yeah. run down lye with wood ashes, right. and used old meat scrap, bones, mm -hmm. and everything. She get in the wash pot, and that lye would eat them up. Eat, uh, eat up a bone just like nobody's business. And uh, when the soap was done, it looked like this real thick syrup. You could just pick it up and hand it on it, just string it up. There. It looked good enough to eat. <laughs> but uh, she had a big trough down. It was, well, it was longer than that couch mm. and wider. Close to uh, 10 foot long, maybe, huh? It, yeah, about that, about that wide. It's like about 4 foot wide. Uh, it was a big trough. A was tree. it made out of a log? Made out, out of a log. Out? A big, big dad, there's a lot of places up there. Well, there wasn't too many hollow trees, but you could find them sometimes. And he'd always pick the one that was holler, and he'd saw off the top of it. Mm -hmm. And to make it, or he'd leave it look, kind of, kind of yeah, come around more than half, top, yeah. Uh -huh. And put a head in that. He'd put, take a board and fix it in so it wouldn't leave the soap out. First, though, he'd take his, he had a foot edge, mm -hmm. kind of thing like what, looked like a sprouting hole, but I'm walking at it. Mm -hmm. But it was sharp. Mm -hmm. He could just hew anything out with that, just dig out a, mm -hmm. a log, mm -hmm. make it smooth, be just as smooth as she makes soap. She always made a gear supply of soap every March. Mm -hmm. And that was our job carrying water to run that lie down. She'd take the ashes and burn green, green hickory and oak wood. Take the ashes up and build a. I'd, Dad would take board. And say, he'd have four foot boards and he'd put them down on a. Make him a trough and he'd put these boards, set them up end to end and let them come up this way. And go wide up here, you know, and we'd stop that up once you got. Fill that with ashes. We'd keep on and they'd pack down and then uh, let them get uh, kind of sprinkle a little from the range, never let it rain right down on them all the time. Mm -hmm. It would have taken all the strength out of them. Mm -hmm. she'd, let that, that, if she'd get ready to make soap, she'd start us carrying water. Mm -hmm. And she had the, this, where well, the boards come together down at the bottom of the hopper, mm -hmm. there was a little soft under there. Mm -hmm. Start pouring water and all, it just tickle us to death and see that live start coming down. And you never saw any coffee any blacker than that stuff was when it come down out of the sash. It would eat you up and you fool with it. Mm -hmm. And uh, it would run down that little trough, she put a vessel under that, mm -hmm. that uh, catch the lie in it, and she'd keep her emptying it over into the wash boiler till she got by. Well, she'd get it about half full, and then she'd put her her meat scraps. Mm -hmm. She never used any kind of. A lot of people talk about making soap out of grease, just straight grease. 
she always used the meat scraps. Meat scraps. Yeah, and it wasn't fit to, to eat. Or, and know, that, you know, bacon know, a lot of times. The fat. Hot weather would get raw, rusty. Rancid and all that. You know, and you couldn't mm -hmm. hardly eat it. And She'd be throwing this aside during the year to accumulate it. She had a vessel to put it in. She'd keep it in there and then old bones. And the lie would eat through that pretty fast. Oh, it? yeah, you'd eat it all up. She'd start it to cook and it had to boil it pretty slow and give it time to eat that stuff up. What and was it, the size of the pot she was doing the boiling? Uh, it was 20 gallons. Mm -hmm. I believe it was 20 gallon pot. Now, what would she. When that was ready, when it was syrup sized, then what would the next step be? Well, she'd uh, dip it out and take the smokehouse and put it in that soap truck. That was and like. She worked till she got it full. She'd fill that up, and Dad made a lid for it, covered up, when you wanted the soap, you just did something dipped out what you wanted. Boy, it told me it was so good when they boiled in that soap. All right, let me get the picture from the 20-gallon pot now, which has had the old meat scraps, the lye, the ashes, the mix. Huh? She, that she stirring that? Yeah, she had to keep it stirring. And how long would she cook it? And you have to wait to cook it until it eat all those scraps. Mm -hmm. Eat all that. And then she'd be testing it like syrup for thickness, huh? Yeah, or she then, could tell. She didn't then, have to test it. She could yeah. tell them where it boiled up and it boiled up, bubble up. How would, she, how would she carry it off and what size oh, take it out of 20 she, gallons? She, she, she'd have to let it. She usually let it sit overnight. She'd take her the biggest part of the day to make a pot of soap. Mm -hmm. She'd let it sit till morning and then she'd take a gourd. It didn't get harden it out in the bucket. Way. Okay. She'd dip a bucket full out with a gourd, mm -hmm. and take that and pour it in the trough, and come back and get her another. She got that pot empty, and then she'd start another pot of salt. And the trough that he had fixed out of that log, is that mm -hmm. right? Yeah. Was where she was putting us all the way into. Yeah. Sure now, would it harden in there? No. It, it never would? Never did. It was always mm -hmm. for subsistence of syrup. Or and it remained that way for the rest of the year. Remained that way as long as you, as long as there was any of it. All right, now we're back at the the uh, the, the log. The trough mm -hmm. would drink up, drink it up sometimes. Would suck it. It, it would just it absorb it into the grain into of the wood. I remember one time she was out of soap. She mm -hmm. Didn't have enough. wasn't going to have enough to last her till March. And uh, one day she told me, she said, "I wish you'd get that soap trough out and set it up." Sit out now. It would get the soap as it went down. It made it the trough didn't look clean, you know. It wasn't really dirty, nothing but soap in it. But it the soap would dry on when it on this on that wood. It would dry. And she told me pull it out and let it so it the air out and she get the, see if she get some of that. Bad looking stuff off of it. Well, he put it right out under the eave of the smokehouse. Well, it rained. It looked tough, the trough got, oh, it was two thirds full of water. And she went out there one day something and looked at it and stuck a stick and stirred it. Mm -hmm. And it was soap. The rainwater had drawn the Soap out that, and that was just as good as soap as she'd made and put in there. She put in there when she first made it, I mean. And she, she was tickled. She had plenty of soap to last her. Oh, people had Now we're, times, yeah. we're talking about using the soap uh, for the uh, greasy sort of wool that, that you've just finished pulling the cockle burrs out of. That soap cut the grease out of that wool, I know my okay. goodness. Now, would she use warm water warm in using water. that? Mm -hmm. She never. How long would she wash the wool before? Well, she'd she just put it in a tub and pour warm water on, put the soap in there, and keep it stirring it around until it almost come clean itself. Then and how would she dry it? With the warm water spread on a sheet. Mm -hmm. She always had scaffolds where she dried fruit. If it was raining in winter time, she'd dry it near the she'd fireplace. Well, when it was raining in the winter time, she'd put it. Uh, 
most times she put it in the smokehouse on a big scaffold of things. And the next it stage was, was pretty, what? It was Carding? Pretty discussion we've been having of the, of the wool back in Gilmer County. Now you've pulled the cockle burrs out, you've got it washed, it's dried, it's looking a little better. What would you, how would you describe it to your eye? What it looked like? Well, it was, it looked practically like these. The sweater, when it was, when it was clean, that white, well, oh, right no, not that as white, it never would be. Gray looking. Uh-huh. And uh, what was the next stage she did? Well, it was carding it. Okay. How did we go about that? Well, yeah, we had these had these little hand cards. They were by, I guess, it's by, I think it's 10 inches, 10 by 4, 10 by 5 inches. And a million a minute little teeth all through them. And take them this way, pull the handle, they had a handle on them, and this long card was down here, and you had this other handle in your hand, and you squish, squish, squish. You're, you're, have to you're turn holding around. one card, you'd have to handle in one hand, and, you, and card in a crossways. With, with the other one. And, and, the, and you, the wool's in between. Yeah, the wool's in the cord. You take it, take the wool and just pull it across them teeth in the cord. Mm -hmm. And it, enough hangs in there that make it all you can handle at one time in the cord. And you have to shuffle them back, change them, just take them, put the wool out for one, and then cart it over again. Just keep on till you get that wool straight. And if you cart it and make it into rolls, and there's little lumps around in it, you can't make it pretty free. It just won't, it just won't spin right. Mm -hmm. So your job in carding is to get it straight enough so yeah, you can spin. You have to. Okay. And you get them, them roll. I can make the prettiest little rolls through your car. And one roll in that 10 inch car would spin a thread as far as near the door. One roll? If you spin it right the right size. Of course you can spin the course thread. And how old would you be when you'd be able to start helping with carding? When you were real little you could help with pulling out the cockle burr. I did. Well, when I was but ten, you hoped to get older by it. When I was ten years old, I spun, I spun enough cotton thread to make ten yards of uh, towel. She used to make all the towels we, we used. Mm -hmm. I, I spun that, and my sister was supposed to spin eight. She was younger than me, so it's been eight. And I told her she was so lazy, she got the hooping cough to get out of it. Mm -hmm. <laughs> she had the hooping cough, and that's, she couldn't spin. And the cotton was meant on the cotton and choked her to death. Mm -hmm. But I agreed with her and told her she was lazy. But I spun mine. Is that because the cotton was raising dust worse? Huh? The cotton raised dust? And no, it was a lint. It, the there's no dust in the cotton. It was it was clean cotton. It, it was just white. And, and there, was, there was a little lint in it. It would cough your head off sometimes. <laughs> the wool was all right that way. Now the wool, wool and body, carnage and body. There's no end about it. And then I think you already told me, unless there's something else you haven't, about how you helped out on... No, you didn't discuss spinning so much as you did weaving. You, you, no. You, you, how did the spinning go? What did you do? Well, I, after, I was, after I was 10 years old, I did a little bit of spinning. Yeah, I used to twist thread. I, and when, when she finished a piece of cloth, I didn't finish that. Ago, and the, when she'd finished, we got off on the sewing machine. Mm -hmm. That always at the end of a piece of cloth, you couldn't weave the whole, the whole length of the thread. There's always uh, enough thread, much that anybody would want to put it in a needle because when you sewed my hand, or the, the needle pull, people call it, left over. Well, she'd pull them out, some single threads out two at a time, she'd pull out two threads, tie them together, pull out two and keep on 
she get a very big ball. Now I'd have to twist it. I had to twist that thread, of course, it use it in a... And I, when I got it twisted, it would be just, look just like this ball freaky by on the floor. You couldn't tell the difference in it, it only had knots in it. That didn't make any difference. It was all the thread or needle and break it off below that knot and didn't have to tie a knot to the thread. <laughs> Well, she'd, uh, it was always the, the filling of the wool cloth she made. She always dyed it different colors. It was always colored thread that we had. And she was good hand, so she sewed by hand just as nice as anybody could on the machine. She did so much of it, I reckon she had good practice. How about her dyeing? How did she go about dyeing? Well, she used different things. It was a wild indigo. So we grew out in the woods. And she'd give her that. It died uh, indigo blue. And then she'd get... Uh, this was a berry or what? Oh, it's the weed. It's a weed. Did yeah. you have to crush the stem to get the color? Yeah, I had to bear it. We had to boil it, put coppers in it. Mm -hmm. Or she get uh, walnut, black walnut mm -hmm. holes. Yeah. Take them off the walnut, just, yeah. you know, the outer. Right, I know the outer. Yeah. And How would she, I know it'll stain your fingers just as yeah, you Yeah, yeah. She would take that. Put them in, boil them, and then get them out of the, take them out of the water, and she boil them about as strong as she wanted. And I think I believe she strained that water. She had a seal, something that she ran that water through to get the drugs and little pieces of oil out of it. And she put her, put it back in the wash pot and put it there whatever she wanted to die in, and it died pretty brown, and she was soft. Or she'd take, uh, white oak bark, and die for that, and die to kind of a different color of brown. Not as dark as one. No, and chestnut bark and would die It would die a uh, light blue. Would it? Yeah. Just She'd have to put, put copper in it to make the dye, sip the dye in the material. When she get all that cloth made, thread dyed and everything done, and got the, uh, the tail end of the fish cloth. And she'd usually red. dye the completed cloth that you turned out, like in 26 inch or whatever the size was. Right? No, she dyed the thread. Before. She dyed the thread. She dyed the thread. So she could actually then use one thread against another to yeah, make, make if she wanted, Yeah, if she wanted different colors, she'd have different, dye different colors of thread, and then she'd work them in. I had, used to have to fill the quills for them. I had a quill. So does that mean she did the dyeing after she had uh, Put them through the spinning wheel and it spun. She couldn't dye the thread if she hadn't the spun. Right. <laughs> so she was ending up with a thread prior to weaving, right? Yeah, yeah. She dyed. She dyed the thread. And I, I don't know. It seemed like I remember a few times that she dyed the wool before she started working it up. When she'd want to dye, have different colors. You mean she might have done it when the wool before you had? I dyed the wool before. I believe she did a few times. But uh, I don't know why. Did she ever tell you where she learned all of that? Where she learned? Did she ever talk about it? Oh, yes. She talked about it. About her mother did the same thing she was doing. And that's where I, she taught me to do what she did. Knit. I knit a thousand pairs of stockings, socks. I knit more than that. I've been knitting. I knit since when I was eight years old. And I got to where I just sit and just knit and read if I wanted to. I read them anyway, story and knitting right on. Mm -hmm. And the work that's going on. And, and I, then 
It didn't interfere with anything. No. Just like eating or breathing. Yeah. But she sewed down. She made up all the clothes that she wore. I she carded and spun the wool, wove it in the cloth, and then she cut it out and sewed it by hand, stitched it together. Crazy. Okay. Uh, after she got a sewing machine, when I was a baby. Yeah, and that made it a little easier. Well, for let me ask you then, where, do you remember, you said that school teacher boarded what, the way you had store-bought britches, I think you said, his trousers. Well, I guess he did. I, I think where, it where, I was wondering where you might have first seen much of store-bought clothing. Well, I, I just can't remember. Was it when because you were everybody, everybody made their own in that whole region. Own, you know. I know you told me your father. You described that to me. Made the shoes. Yeah. You, well, my. In fact, you seem to like to hang around your father more to learn well, more I farming did. tasks I and blacksmith. So I was wondering if you neglected uh, some of this side. Once no. you could escape it. When uh, I wouldn't have got out if there'd have been anything inside for me done, <laughs> I'd have been at work in the house, picking a little receipt out of cotton or something like that. Yeah. But I'd, I'd follow him or after, my, after I was, after my mother quit making the clothes, yeah. and I could ramble on. A lot of times I didn't want much to do. Here we go again. Yep, thing This is a motorcycle they're running a racing car. Who is it? I don't know. One of these racing cars with a bar on them. Oh. And that's not Barry, too, is it? Patterson Boy? Well, where it really fit, I'll tell you that. It's not there. Well, this, mm -hmm. uh, uh, the first girl that my oldest brother ever went to see. He wore a suit of clothes that my dad and mother had parted in his farm and made them by hand. His entire suit of clothes? Yeah, the whole thing. Coat. Everything about it. Coat, vest, suit, and shirt, pants. That's everything about the suit. Yeah. Now what was that, a wool suit? Wool. What color did she dye that? I believe it was blue. But she and could, would she follow a pattern, or how would she know how to sew these yes, lapels? She, she had a pattern. If she had to have a pattern to fit him and cut it, it wouldn't look like a suit, I guess, would just be she just whacked it out anyway. She's going to have to cut and sew. And she can make little stitches. My goodness. You couldn't tell it the machine work. Mm -hmm. She was sure would put them stitches in their pocket. Now, that, was that true as the rest of you grew up, or was that more true for the older ones? Which? The fact that she would make all the finished clothes, even dress clothes. That she'd make them. Well, yeah, she made all of them, made all the clothes, I don't know. Because there was no machine until you came along. No. You were the seventh, you said. Yeah, well, after, after she got a machine, of course, she didn't do much sewing by hand. She mended, mended things, and sew up rips once in a while, and they won't. It was a foot treadle machine, much yeah, like these like that one. This one we see, not yeah. too different. It had some cabinet to it? Well, it had a, it was a box top, they call it. It had the, the head to sit up on the machine, like it was just up all the time. Yeah, no problem. And it had a box to yeah. sit over the, mm -hmm. the machine. Was it a singer sewing machine? Mm -hmm. No, it was a climax, I believe. Climax. The new makes machine. 
Now, what about your first railroad? When did you first see a locomotive? I was 16 years old. Was it in L.J. when you went in? Or? Yeah, I went to L.J. I never went to L.J. I was 16 years old. I was afraid to throw them off in L.J. I never did go. Mm -hmm. I had no business. You were not unusual, were you, in that respect? No, I just... Many people didn't get there till they were maybe 25 or Oh, yeah, or so. there's, a lot of, there's a lot of kids who go. Mm -hmm. uh, there's uh, Grandpa West. He lived right uh, less than a mile of where I was raised. Mm -hmm. so, so, well, his oldest kid, some of them was married. When he moved off from there, and he moved down on the... Cartake River down below Cartake. And but he'd take his kids to Atlanta with him. And the steer wagon, they'd be gone a week. Mm -hmm. But that was more unusual. It was more likely if you lived in the country you didn't yeah. live anywhere. Uh, they they wanted to go with him, he let them go. They should camp out on the road. Going on down. They'd sleep in the wagon or yeah, along the wagon. Yeah, in the wagon. If it was warm weather, they'd sleep under the wagon. Mm -hmm. Just spread a quilt on the wagon and fall under there. And, and uh, they, what about your first automobile? When do you think you saw it? Well, that was, I guess, I believe, it was about 19 and 14 or 15. It was before the first World War mm -hmm. when I saw it. Well, Don was as big as Nelson. Mm -hmm. I know Dad used to. Don was, what, about 12? Yeah. Was he that old? Or? Yeah. I didn't think that. he was born then. Uh-uh. He, uh, he was born in 1906. Six. He'd only been about eight years. Oh, I see, yeah. But he was a tall uh -huh. boy. It was 1914 or 15. Uh-huh. Well, uh, Dad used to... He's a kid. We'd be there and they'd hear a car coming. And they, they wasn't too many of them. Just where was right? that now? Where did you see it? He lived at Carter Cave then. Mm -hmm. He moved, sold his farm back in, on the mm -hmm. foot of Earth Mountain and moved to Carter Cave. And uh, they hit it for the fence. They were over one of them. Sometimes Gus and Floyd would be there. Mm -hmm. Mine and it all just Where were you? would be on the farm and you'd hear a car coming, or how would you? Know? Be at home, be there at my dad's. He mm -hmm. lived on Dawsonville Highway. Yeah. On the highway That's because it was a highway and there was more traffic. Yeah. Back where you lived in Oh, that was the only place you ever saw one for a long time, was right on the, on the highway. They didn't get on on the, on the dirt road. On the, the was highway, what was called the highway, which was just a, dirt, a dirt road. It was a dirt road, but it was going somewhere. Yeah, and it, it was kept up a little better, but there was places on that road that you couldn't get a Duke's Terror Strip of the wagon hard. And it was bad at times. Cars mm -hmm. didn't try it much. So about 1915, maybe, you first saw a car on that road. Well, it was before, let's see, when World War One. When World War I. We got into it in 1917, but it began in Europe in 1914. Well, it was 1914, that was before my brother went. Yeah, Harsh. yeah, it he was, was 1917 when and, the uh, war began. We got in. And, uh, and it, I, I don't know. By the way, do you ever hear from Horace? Oh, yeah, I hear from Horace. How is he? Oh, uh, he's doing pretty well, not too well. Is he still around Atlanta? Next morning. Wonder if we could go by there tomorrow. Would that mm -hmm. be practical or not? I don't know. Do you have his address? Uh, or yeah. just a box at the post office? At the post office box, Smyrna. But you have a phone number, don't you? No, I don't. But Rudy may have one. He did have one. It's in some of the old telephone books. He may remember it. But he's, uh, he's not doing too much. He, he fell some, some years ago and broke his back, broke one vertebra. Mm -hmm. And he's down and out for a long time. He has his garden, the garden, 
They come up here about once a year. I just haven't bumped into him in years. I've never seen him up here, and it was years ago down there, I think. So. Well, he's the only brother I've got living now. He seems to take an interest in things, like going back to, was it Ebenezer? Or yeah, Ebenezer, and he goes to Milky Way, and then it, uh, That's something we've it. never been to. When's that day to that one? Uh, I don't know. I've, I've He's the only one who keeps up with all that. Yeah, I, I think he is. Is it still held well, in Gilmer County, or where? No, it's Chatsworth, so they mm -hmm. had, it, had it for the longest time. Well, there's nobody, none of the muck is living, except the second and third cousins, they all, mm -hmm. and I don't know anything, I've seen them, and they're, they're all nice people. I just think a lot of Lee Muck has got some boys, and then he's got two girls. And I think they're the leaders of the uh, reunion. The reunion of. That's Lee Mulkey's? Yeah, son for Joe's boy. Mm -hmm. And they live around Chatsworth, is that the reason? And it's there? Some of them do, and some of them still live in Gilmer County. Mm -hmm. We've got, I think, got two girls that live there. Mm -hmm. And him and his wife got killed in the be away at the mm -hmm. same time. I always thought a lot of Lee and Lee and Marto want to go to them, but the rest of them I never did check to our day they was a pretty nice kid. He used to live down here at the old Elm Tree on the board of Jasper. Mm -hmm. He used to come out, I used to see him every week or two. He'd come out here. Uh, just a few years ago. He had this little antique stuff. They said it was sound or what he had. Down there. Which one was that? Daily. Daily. Uncle Joe's youngest boy. Did Don ever go see him? Yeah, Don. Yeah, I thought he would. He had his picture in the L.J. paper, I believe, where he was, I don't, know, don't remember what he was doing, but Don saw that picture and he hung him up. Don was kind of foolish about his people, some, some of them. Uh -huh. Well, he knew, and well, he didn't like none of them. You saw the, um, I read you some of those poems from Don's yeah. book. I was wondering what your observations were of, of the impression that Kim Mulkey had on Don, and whether, how much of it was realistic, and how much of it is Don's own, you know, perhaps view of the world. You know, well, like saying that Kim Mulk, you know, I mean, I'm wondering if Kim Mulkey saw slavery and blacks, all those kind of issues in a sharper way compared to today, or whether that's Don gaining general well, principles. Well, I'll tell um, you about uh, mm -hmm. Don and my dad. When Don was, he wasn't as old as Nelson. My daddy had come there. And he'd always interested in hearing him talk. When he'd start asking him questions, he about the Civil War. He just stayed around him, didn't he? And he just hung on, and I said, Don, get a man that can't fall and quit where he comes from. Mm -hmm. He'd get up and come to the door, Dad would. He said, what are you doing? I said, I'm cooking supper. Mm -hmm. Well, now you go to tend to your supper and let that boy alone. He's not bothering me. Yeah. How do you expect him to ever learn anything? He loved the, they, lo they lo enjoyed each other. That night. Yeah, he enjoyed talking to him right. because the Don, and there's, there's a difference in him. He always, he always thought more Don. They, all the rest of them said he worshipped Don, didn't care about nothing about the end of the rest of the kids. But now Gus's voice was right the opposite. Mm -hmm. they, they'd come and Dad would say something to him, and they'd do something to him, and they'd say something to him. Oh, what the fuck is that? Mm -hmm. and they'd stomp. And they met around. Well, Don enjoyed asking questions yeah. and wanting the answer. Yeah. And, and the funny thing questions. happened one time. Mm -hmm. Uncle Bob Evans, I believe we were talking about, yeah. about him. Uh, he deserted. 
Yes. The, right. The, each side. You told he me. went from the the Confederate side to the Con Union yeah, side. Yeah, to the other, yeah. so where he'd get uh, the pension. Where he'd get pension. That's idea, and he got it by. And uh, so Don, he, he asked, mm -hmm. he'd asked uh, his grandpa questions, and uh, well, was Uncle Uncle Bob in the war? Yeah, the other guy was in the war. Well, of course, what side was he on? Mm -hmm. And maybe he'd heard me say something about sure. you know, and he'd get he'd get behind mm -hmm. his grandpa. And well, he joined the one side. You know, mm -hmm. When before the war ended, they talked that one side would get a pension, the other wouldn't. And Bob deserted his side and went to the other. And uh, so. Well, Don would ask him questions about it, you know, and he'd Dad would ask him. And uh, he'd always give him a satisfactory answer if he if he knew it. If he didn't, he'd say, well, I just don't remember that, or I never mm -hmm. did hear anything about it. And uh, he told about him to turn and they had to talk about that. So one day, I know Don one day, he was eight years old. He wasn't old enough to mm -hmm. know better than this. Really early impressions, first. Yeah, and that impression was with him, and he was, he didn't know that he was doing anything drastic by a question on the ball. He asked him if uh, they were talking, he asked Uncle Bob questions about the Civil War. And he wouldn't, uh, he, he told him uh, what a hard time they had, you know, mm -hmm. and how they fought. And all that. Mm -hmm. Don said, well, you deserted didn't you, Uncle Bob? No, honey, I didn't do that. And he said, well, Grandpa said you did. And, oh, well, now your Grandpa's mistaken. He's just mistaken. Mm -hmm. I'll have to straighten him out on that. He just, and Dad had told Don the story mm -hmm. of the you know. Well, he's he drew a pension, and they reported that he deserted, and they cut his pension off. And he went and got right. this old man told me that, yeah. to swear that there's another mm -hmm. Bob Evans in right. that one. <laughs> so he, he tried to satisfy Don about it, you know, and Don said, there uh, why? Well, he said, Uncle Bob, Grandpa told me he deserted, and I'd beat him before anybody. And he got up and walked up. And he was, I mean, he was one, I don't know, I guess he's eight years old. He yeah. Just a little fella. He didn't know how hard that was hitting Uncle Bob. I don't know if he's scared. Well, there were not a great many Union soldiers, actually, then. The impressions Don may have got of that period uh -huh. of a great many Union soldiers in the, in the uh, multifamily is probably not, it's like the Indian thing, maybe an impression, a childhood impression, rather. Yeah, yeah. But I think the impression that Kim Mulkey left on Don was a tremendous one, you know. Uh -huh. Sort of, uh, this principle, he, he regarded him as a very principled person. Yeah, well, he had a lot of confidence in his Crossed him in anything, anything my dad told him to do, he did it. He told him to put something, he never put up no argument. Now, except for the times that your father would be visiting at your house, what other occasions would they have to be together? Well, we visited them a lot. Yeah. See, we lived uh, inside of my daddy for a long time. And on to go there when he wants to. He'd visit him when they lived at Carter K. He got there a lot. They was together a good deal. And I mean, when I was there or whatever at my house, they was together all the time. When? They, when, when Dad would come to my house, oh, yeah. or then, we'd go to yeah. his. Don was right on right. the hill mm -hmm. where he went. Probably that was true as against the other uh, grandchildren, and it was probably true as amongst even your own children that Don uh, yeah, paid more attention yeah. to Kim Mulkey. Yeah. Than 
and therefore was more impressed with him. You know? Oh, Dad, uh, Don always seemed to have a lot of confidence in Dad and anything he said. Right. Well, I think it's still apparent from the stuff I read you in this latest book, so you can you know, see the long-term effect of it. Well, we're talking about firsts, and we wander now and then. Do you think of any other firsts that were... What kinds of food? When did you first encounter a kind of food, maybe, that you'd never seen before? A what? Some kind of food, maybe, that was just utterly strange to you. Well, when they first began, I remember the oysters. When did you ever... I was just I was just a kid, but like Grant, I guess. Mm -hmm. But I can remember it because Mother and, and my aunt laughed at him. And Who were they laughing at? And Uncle Ben. They went to L.J. one time. Mm -hmm. Old man and uh, Martin Teen. They both knew him. What was his name? Martin Teen. He was... How do you spell his last name? T-E-E-M. Teen. Uh-huh. Was he from L. J. or from your he, section? He was raised in Gilman County and he lived in L. J. Mm -hmm. I can't remember ever doing anywhere else. Mm -hmm. All of his life. But he had a he ran a store, had a, a grocery store mm -hmm. and, and a wholesale store mm -hmm. and well, he sold in L.J. Yeah, grocery right. and dry goods. He just had a sure. oh, big store of everything. Oh, yeah. He went down there and he, they went in to get something for the lunch. I guess they forgot that Dad would always take his lunch from home and he'd go to L.J. and all day at 12. But mm -hmm. he didn't, he'd get a can of salmon for mm -hmm. a nickel. And can of salmon for a nickel? Yeah. Okay. They saw in the crack. They had yeah. crackers in barrels. Right. Just crackers just went with it. Yeah. And he uh, wouldn't ever drink a beer or anything. No. Nothing like that. Beer wouldn't hurt too much. Okay. Yeah. It was either whiskey or nothing. Yeah. Okay. Sometimes wine. People used to make a little bit of wine. Mm -hmm. Almost everybody made. Now this it. was the time that he bumped into oysters, though, huh? Yeah. Mr. Uh, uh, Tim. They saw them on the shelf. Sometimes were they a can or what? It was in a can. And he said, you ought to try some of this. And then said, that's the best eating you've ever done. Mm -hmm. And so just, just, just try a can of it. And he, I never did know how it wound up, but he told him, he said, no, nah, yeah, well, I'll take a can home with you. And if you don't like them, you don't have to pay for them. Mm -hmm. Well, they took a can. go on home. Uncle Ben said, Maybe we ought to buy a uh, picture on the can of the goods, you know. Mm -hmm. Maybe we ought to buy another can. The children might all like it. Okay. No, well, Dad said that. No, this Dad must said, have cost more than a nickel or something. Like no, I think it was maybe a dime. Okay. It was a great okay. big can. Big can of oysters. And uh, Uncle Ben said, oh, no, that, that one will be enough. So we'll just come in off the feet. <laughs> and they won't. They won't want it. I wasn't in the army, and they said, sure. And, uh, mother fixed them for dad. How did they fix them, do you remember? I think they just put them in kind of... Raw? No, they put them in... Fried them a little fried like chicken? Them a little. Okay, just, yeah. Just stirred them a little. Like, dad never did like anything fried real, real fried. Yeah. And, uh, Uncle Ben took his own home. So, <laughs> Mother set the horses out in front of Dad's mouth. He took up his fork. I never saw him take a bite of anything he wanted to use to eat, and he didn't smell off of it. <laughs> he smelled that. He picked up an oyster on his fork, you know. Smelled a lot of it. Yeah. Took a little nibble off of it. He smelled it again. He threw it out in the yard, and there's a bunch of ducks out there. And they run from it. It was hot, of course. Yeah, hot. It was still hot. He never did eat those oysters. No? He never did taste them. And he didn't did. let anyone else. One in his mouth. He decided against oysters right then. Yeah. And you were a little one then. Uncle Ben was the same way. Mm -hmm. He wouldn't eat his. I know. 
And so they didn't pay Mr. Team for those, did they? No, I don't remember how it wound up. I don't know. They might have got him, but... Now, besides making whiskey, you've mentioned wine now. What kind of wines did they just make? Grape wine? Grape, or? blackberry, or any kind of mm -hmm. thing. That would did they keep it around too? For a mess, yeah. We'd keep it. Would they offer people a drink of wine, or was it not? Well, sure, they did. That's what they made it for. Mm -hmm. They're friends and neighbors. Mm -hmm. How about children? Uh, did you ever get children, to taste? No, them? children. They did food and things. I knew there's two boys lived there, the orphan boys. They were about like Nelson, Olsen. And they made wine. They'd get a pot of grapes and make wine. Maybe they had a lot of grapes just out on the farm. Mm -hmm. They'd make wine out of them. And they'd sell our farm. They had, the time they were growing, they had a good bit of money. And they did just as fast and ten cents into it. I reckon they bought their own sugar when they got started and had a jug of wine that was something all over the place. Mm -hmm. and people come in and want to pour the wine, they pour it up on it. It wasn't too expensive. I had to pour it for a dollar a gallon. Now, wine was not regarded, would that be regarded as moonshine in the same sense as well, yeah. corn whiskey? Well, they. Nobody ever paid any attention. They wanted too much of it made. Just people mm -hmm. made it for their own use. And mm -hmm. if they wanted to give a friend a drink of wine, mm -hmm. right. But, uh, but that, beer now, nobody tried to make beer. Or... No, mm -hmm. I know after, well, way after all. I was going to marry with these kids. Go to Florida and make some lager beer. Mm -hmm. They got to go into Atlanta and they would get lager beer in Atlanta. They would drink it in a and bar. And they'd, they'd get a drink down there and they'd like it too. Well, and that. So What'd they, they make they, it out of? Well, they got yeast. Mm -hmm. uh, well, I don't know. Arch Pedersen took it somehow or other and used it all. It was kind of a vine. It was, all I knew it was uh, the hot wine. It had the... Uh, Using Irish potatoes as well? Uh -huh. Any Irish potatoes, did you say? No, the, the vine. The they, vine well, they use Irish potatoes. I, mean, they, I think they break them up, break mm -hmm. them up and kind of dry them a little or something. Mm -hmm. I don't remember just how they fix it. What'd they make it in? In a keg mm -hmm. or a big jug. Mm -hmm. and then they'd bottle it up. Now, was that while they were still in Gilmer? Yeah. They were all living around in a hub. <laughs> and they they made this beer. Oh, they had I don't know how many bottles. <laughs> and uh, yeah, after the bottle it up, kept it in it. And I was there one day. But these hot pods they use, it's, they draw this mine in there, a little sort of looking pod, and it just in between there are no kettles on the pods and all these down in the day it looks like the yellow powder stuff and that you can smell that or something like they that. use some kind of hops uh huh and uh, they got their gear fixed up i was there one day i don't know who got some ford was they both married but i think ford lived up about quarter of a mile from the bus but they were working, working in the crop. And Jane come in and said, come on out here and let's try a bottle of beer. Mm -hmm. The log of beer. And I went on to smoke out. She didn't know how to open it. And she saw a nail that they picked up there to open it, you know. And uh, she said, now, nah. when I pulled the cap off of this, she said, you jab it in your mouth. Really. Mm. She pulled the cap off and squirted it in her face and she handed it to me and I got a tickle. And that stuff went taking all over the board. Shot uh, everywhere. Hell, it just spattered Did everywhere. you ever get it in your mouth? No. Just standing there laughing while well, She set the bottle down. And the cap, when she pulled the cap off, you know, it flew somewhere. And, uh, but 
הוא ישאל שמה לו, כיצד זה נשאר לך מהם? מילא זה הוא פנקי בלוי פתוח, נאף עוד פיקודו שלו, הוא לא ישבע את זה. Did you ever, the next one you managed, huh? Next one we, we drank here. How'd you like the taste of it then? Yeah, well, we set that one right down there. Yeah, they thought it, they thought they blew it. Of course she dropped the cap somewhere, I don't know where she dropped it, but anyhow, when they come in to dinner, they went to get them on. And Gus come in the house and said, Jane, Uh, we must have bottled that stuff up too quick. He said, toss above two bottles up there. He said, the board. <laughs> you, all didn't, you all didn't die laughing, did you? You just kept a straight face on We just wanted to so bad we hurt. <laughs> <laughs> we waited till they got gone. And we had the most fun over that. Mm. We never did tell them what okay. happened. And we unkept that bottle. It really splattered. Of course, they wouldn't have cared if we'd told them. Right. It was all fun. We always had Gus, Jane, my family all was gone. Mm -hmm. Now, did you? We never had no crosswords, no hard feelings or anything. When did you? How about store-bought candy? When did you first run into that kind of thing? Well, I can remember candy as long as I can remember anything. But it was nothing but stick candy. Peppermint and lemon stick. And chewing gum was, uh, I believe it was called long tom. Great long white sticks about that long one, nothing on the paraffin with sugar in it. Paraffin was yeah. called chewing gum? That's what it was. All the you just chewed candy. paraffin. You can take the paraffin and. Mm -hmm. add it had flavor in it. And put sugar in it, and it'll chew just like the chewing gum. Only you can't chew it long; it'll all crumble up. Yeah. Well, you get down great long sticks like that, mm -hmm. penny. Your dad would bring them to you. Is that why you remember them so uh, long? He never did buy that. He always bought stick candy. That's all kind you get. I never saw any kind of candy but stick candy. And the reason he would be able to occasionally buy it in LJ and bring it back to you when he came. Yeah, you are. Well, you get a great big sack full for a nickel. Mm -hmm. And I remember uh, always, I was, I guess I was closer to my daddy than I was to my mother. I, I enjoyed being with him mm -hmm. or something yeah. or other. I got, she got asked me and made me work for him. He, he'd kind of sort of make it easy on me because my oldest sister wasn't well, able to get out in the field and do work. She never did work. And it was anything. Just once in a while, they'd get in tight. And, and Minnie, the younger than me, I used to tell her she'd play all sick, but she was sick a lot when she was little. She, never, they didn't, she didn't go out to work like I did. And uh, for that reason, I guess I liked to follow my daddy. Every time he'd start, I'd go tag along. And when he was working in the field, he'd plow. We'd be a horn. He'd be on the head of us, climbing on. You know, we'd be maybe way down here on the hill, and he'd always stop his horse and horse. Let's go to dinner. Well, I wouldn't head towards the house. The house was always this way. Mm -hmm. and instead of that, I'd go up to where he was climbing, get his horse out. I always laid his harness back on the plow stock going to dinner. And I'd, I'd be standing there and he'd throw the bridle up, he'd get on the horse, reach out, give me a hand, and I'd step on my foot and he'd pull me up behind him sometimes, sit me up in front of him. You enjoyed that as a treat, huh? Uh, that's good. How old were you, would you oh, say? Oh, I just was. Eight or nine years old. Mm -hmm. All the boys making some mad papers. Oh, they just have Were they out in the field at that time? Yeah, they were working. Yeah, you ought to be ashamed of yourself. You all might be what? Just uh, hoeing and. We'd be hoeing. Yeah. Thinning the corn, replanting it. Mm -hmm. And uh, you ought to be ashamed of yourself. Bring that whole, whole troop of lazy things in the house. 
you ain't no business doing that. Why didn't you walk? You know, that horse was tied all day. I'm going to have to ride my horse, too. He loved the horse. And one day he heard me. He lined them jokers up. He told them what it was. He said, now, don't you ever dare hear me. Let me hear you say another word to her about that. So she works. So she works just like a horse is good. And so she's helping feed the horses. She was tired. And it, I won't let her ride the house. It's none of your business. She said, you keep your mouth shut about it. Boy, that, I'd settle down. His word was law. Huh? His word was law. I knew it was. He did them that way when I'd want to go somewhere sometimes. I'd want to go to church, maybe. And the boys would want to go. They, they all we had girlfriends around, you know. Mm -hmm. They could ride a mule. They could lead the mule around and take the girl up behind them and take them home. They did a lot of that. And uh, they wouldn't want to fool with driving the buggy. Mm -hmm. For me to go to church, and on Sunday, Altos, all weekends, he was going with uh, Mary, early Mary. Mm -hmm. And uh, I was, uh, you going to church Sunday? I was, I was thinking about it. Well, oh, ain't no use in it. Ain't no one going to preach, but he would call some old preacher. Mm -hmm. He thought I didn't lie. Mm -hmm. And uh, I know you know, the mules are going to be tired. Mm -hmm. We had to work them mm -hmm. pretty hard, you know, behind with the crop. Mm -hmm. The weeds had been raining. Mm -hmm. uh, the whole mules just be worked down. And mm -hmm. Finally, oh, one day on Saturday, I believe, he's talking about it. You don't want to go do it. You, don't, you just have to go. And, no, I tell him I didn't have to do anything. Mm -hmm. But I'd said something mm -hmm. about going to church. Dad heard they had heard me talking to some of them, my mother, some of them about going to church. And so we got up Sunday morning, off of the night, and said, Now, I'm going to church today. And said, Ain't no use in that new pool. I have to pull the boat, carry you. He said, You just stay here and make some, somebody, some of the neighbors. More we'll spend the day with you. I said, Well, I don't know. Mm -hmm. And well, I knew it was too tired to pull that boat. Dad was sitting out on the porch. I also went on out to the. Mm -hmm. I think I got ready to go. Mm -hmm. I really had a remember exactly mm -hmm. now. But anyway, I also went out to talk to you now. Pretty much, you know. Picked up the saddle. Dad looked at me and said, You're not going to church? I thought you were going to go to church. I said, Well, I thought about it, but I said, I was just the mule was too tired. I just got it for me. I said, I was just said the mule was too tired to work too hard to pull the bug. <laughs> he said, Yeah. He just got up and walked out to the barn. He had a mule. He said, uh, I thought she was going to. Take your sister to church today, or drive a boat. I heard you. Oh, well, she don't care nothing about going. So the mules just work so hard this week. Yeah. He, he repeated what I told yeah. what I told Red. He said, well, yeah. He said, how much has she worked? So she's worked a lot longer than mules. So she's having to feed them mules. And he said, now, if you don't want to drive the mule, the boat. He said, lay that side, hang that side of back from the side of the shed and take your foot in your hand and go to church if you want to go. And so I so hit the mule to the boat and take your sister. Well, I, I thought the mule was too. He said, you thought that, he said, you just wanted, didn't want to didn't want to take her to church because you had yeah. something else more you thought more important right. in your mind. And he said, any time they want to go to church and you don't want to drive, mm -hmm. take, to drive take them in the buggy, mm -hmm. he said, you can hoof it and I'll take them. <laughs> you could really tell them off when he got ready. Then. Yeah. You know, the other... Alto just turned around and hits the mirror. Yeah, straighten that out in a hurry. Yeah. Then. 
the other evening you had your guitar in your hand and you sang a song that Buddy said she didn't remember. Do you remember? It was about a banjo. About what? About a banjo. A banjo? Yeah, that's what the song was about, I think. Oh, I didn't know it hard. Yeah, no, yeah. How does it go? Why don't you try it then? Uh, I don't know if I could. I haven't sang any all day. You think you could? Without a, without a guitar, but just sing it, because I don't think you sang it before when we were recording well, the songs. Well, I sang it. came back to you. I can sing better. You must have you. sang it from the old, when you were a kid, huh? Oh, yeah. No, mm -hmm. no, no. Okay. There's a gone down old force of no way looking someone. He picked up the morning paper and he read the river column. He put his hands to work on cutting from a patch of now he's going to build a boat to beat the steamer and that's just a bow, wow, wow. Oh, no, he went to chipping and a blocking and a sawing. His wicked neighbor's laughing and a ha, ha, ha. Oh, no, he kept a telling him something's going to happen. Forty days and forty nights, the rain would keep him trapping. Bow, wow, wow. Oh, no, he caught him up some of every kind of pieces of all the circus souls. He did them all to pieces. He had a mulligan calf and some fine jersey cattle, so he drove them in the ark when he heard the thunder rattle. Oh, well, well. Um, the rain began to fall and it comes mighty heavy. The river rose immediately and burst it through the levee. The serpent hissed the pipe together, all for all the fuss and couldn't hear years while the boss remained a question. Oh, oh, oh. Uh, the ark he got to sailing and a sailing and a sailing. The line he got to damn the rock and like to broke a failing. Yeah, I won't. <coughs> now, I had to stop it. Line, he got his dandruff and like to broke a feeling. You know, all the creatures around sound snowy and the critters want to boss around and want to make you bitter. And wow, wow, wow. Well, hand the only nigger on the board to steam and hatch it. It was lonely in the barber shop and couldn't stand the racket. The news himself, he got a piece of wood and string and band it. And then he had a band of the first it was invented. Oh, well, well. He had a long neck, very long and tapering. He had a set of screws and a bit of bridge and apron. He had a piece of tin and a thimble for to ring it. Not to my question, no rat is going to string it. Oh, well, well, well. well, the possum had his longer tail as a song and I am singing. The hair was long and thick and strong, just fit for bands of stringing. Old Handy showed it off his close to barber shaving men's faces and then he finds them side by side spice the little faces. Oh, oh, oh. And the first jig he struck was never mind the weather. We'll all get on the lifeboat and fill for sure together. Some got to singing, some to dancing, came from fancy figure. Old hand sit in the corner and say half time the neighbor was now. Well, from that day to this, there isn't any knowing of any hair at all. All my possums still are growing. So listen to my friends, and you will learn a lesson where you find a band, you find a nigger and a possum. <laughs> hey, you remember that from when? No, since I was old enough to remember anything. You think it was a popular song in, well, when you I, were a girl? Yeah, it was. Different ones sung it around mm -hmm. here. Like Not here. at church, obviously. No. <laughs> what other popular song can you think of that was around about? Would that be like the face on the. Or what was that one that we sometimes, you know, the. Oh, I don't know. I'm thinking uh, not Jack and Joe. I don't know if that's that old. But there were some popular songs that came from. How did that Jack and Joe go? I used to know it. You used to, yeah. But I, it could be from your childhood. I didn't know whether that one, that one's from your childhood. Where groups of people would sing, is that right? Oh, yeah. Well, they'd get to sing and change. Yeah. 
different. You know the song? Yeah. Same song. I'm the same. Well, when current. did you hear your first radio? Huh? That's a first. When did you hear your first radio? Oh, I just don't remember. It's been a long time. Was it in Gilmer? Mm, no. Was it after you were down around I to Kennesaw, maybe? I believe. I believe Matt and Diddy sent me a radio. It's a little video thing. It wasn't but that would have been in the 1930s. In little old batches, it felt like that. That's when I moved to. Oh, it was 19, after Kennesaw. 39. That was late. That's but when did you hear one in someone else's house? Did I you? I never heard of one. No one had one. So not during the 20s at all? No, no. I heard of them. But in the 20s, you never heard a radio. You think it was at the end of the 30s, maybe? Yeah, yeah. Okay. Almost 1940 when you heard a radio. Uh -huh. You had heard of them, but you hadn't oh, yeah, been in other people's homes to hear them. Buddy? she gone out, I guess. Where'd you go? Who's in there? I was trying to see. Did Buddy <laughs> go out? I was going to see if she remembered I can as remember. a child when she first I can home. remember my daddy singing and I never did learn all the song. I don't, probably he didn't know it all. <coughs> My name it is Joe Bowers. I had a brother. I, I came from old Missouri. It was all the way from Pike. I'll tell you why I left there and how I came to Rome. Tell me, my dear old mother, so far away from home. I used to pour the galar, her name was Sally Black. I asked her if she'd marry me, she said it was a whack. Said she had me two hours before we hit for life. You'd better get a little home to keep your little wife. Oh, Sunny, dear Sunny, oh, Sunny, for your sake. I'll go to California and try to raise a stake. Said she to me, Joe Bowers, you are the man to win. Here's a kiss to burn the bargain, she hugged a dozen in. When I got in that country, I had Mary Red. I had such wolfish feelings, I first myself was dead. But the thought of my dear Sally soon made those feelings give, and whispered hope to Bower, I wish I had them yet. At last I went to mining, caught in my biggest slip, came down upon the border just like a ton of bread. I worked both light and early, through sun and rain and snow, I was working for my Sally, it was all the same to Joe. At night I got a letter from my dear brother I. It came from old Missouri, it was all the way from time. It brought the darndest news to me that ever I did hear, since I had married a butcher. And the butcher had repaired. <laughs> Was that the end? Yeah, yeah, and your dad it. used to sing it? Yeah, he used to sing it. Did he sing it. other popular songs? No, that was just little, just little not, not very jingles. Much, yeah. Not very many. Humorous ones, occasionally. Like yeah, that. something like that. Mm -hmm. He wouldn't say where he'd learn them. I remember sitting in his lap, him oh. singing that to me. That's where I learned Did he sing any lullabies? No. I don't, remember. He, he I don't wrote, think you've ever sung that one before. I uh, don't hours. guess I ever have. Uh, no. Do you uh, remember another one? That I was singing a lot of times just when I'm just mm -hmm. by myself. It just it's on my mind and I'm singing. Mm -hmm. I don't remember any more of him singing, I don't believe. But he used to sing uh, other uh, sacred songs. Yeah, uh, right. He didn't care too much. He liked some of the what he used to call love songs. Mm -hmm. 
like uh, he Do you sang. know of a, long, a love song he sang? No, I don't remember him ever hearing him sing them. He liked to hear them. Mm -hmm. We used to sing them. Sad ones? Uh, like yeah. ballads? Some of them was, mm -hmm. and some of them was just kind of humorous. Some of them was like, uh, I'm Buddy, good. when was what was the first radio you ever heard, and where? Your mother says she doesn't remember hearing a radio until, but not even in Kennesaw. Did you have a radio in Kennesaw? She says not until Nat and Dee Dee sent one. No, we didn't have it. I got that when I come. That was near the end, yeah. 1939, when you were leaving. Uh, you never had people. one? Did you ever hear one at your other friends' homes? How old yeah. were you? The Leonard's had one, didn't they? Leonard's and the Garrett's? Huh? The so Garrett's? when did you hear them? How old were you? I don't remember the Garrett's had you yeah. When I was about... Tenth grade? Early? Tenth grade. In high school. Well, there's... Different people had radios around, but I never did. Mm -hmm. What instruments, if any, did you have in your home? Hmm. What didn't we have? Well, name and any. Uh, anything that would use harp or harmonica. In your home when you were raised? Yeah. Who played the Jews harp? Well, Charlie. He who, play who played the harmonica? He played that. That's all, he, all the music he could play. Charlie? He's a good singer, yeah. He could sing and play the harmonica. Uh, he play a bit. And he was the only one who played the Jews' harp? But it used to...